Yeah. Yo, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Dan Paul. We back and we live for episode seven, everyone. Mm, How y'all doing today, man? Um, we about to get right into the episode. You know, this past weekend, you know, it was a nine-year-old that just recently hung herself. You know, uh, she was in Alabama, uh, nine-year-old fourth grader in elementary school being harassed, bullied racially, you know? Um, her grandmother f found her in her room hanging, you know, and it's unfortunate, you feel me? I'm just speaking on a lady last week being stabbed in Baltimore for handing money over to a panhandler, you know? Oprah had to come out and say something about that. Wow. And then we go into an African-American nine-year-old female that was being bullied. She transferred to two different, high, two different elementary schools because she was being bullied at one. The mother and her family decided to transfer transfer her to another elementary school and she continued to be bullied. Mm. She was notifying the school officials and they were ignoring her. Mm -hmm. um, the mother was telling the news that the daughter kept saying, mom, they keep messing with me, they keep messing with me. And the mom is like, all right, well, we're gonna have to do something about it. After the daughter was found um, lynched, or I mean, hang, hung, uh, the mother came over to the school and reported it. She basically was saying, I'm pretty sure y'all were aware of my child being harassed, being bullied and things in that sort. And you know what they said. They weren't aware of anything. <laughs> you know, it has made me think of this show called 13 Reasons Why. I'm not sure if you ever heard of it. I, I don't think I ever heard of it. It's on Netflix. <clears throat> basically, it was a girl who committed suicide. Uh, for being bullied, being um, just being bullied, teased and picked on. It's on Netflix uh, for those that never seen it. But um, it was 13 reasons. It was the first season was 13 episodes. 13 mm. reasons on why she was being bullied. Mm. After she was um, pronounced dead, after she killed herself, mm. committed suicide, the school officials basically said that they didn't know anything about it. Mm. But the whole flip side of it is the 13 reasons she wrote a diary for each person that was involved in her being bullied. Mm. The mother found out, they took the school to court, mm -hmm. things in that sort. So each and every episode, it was starting to reveal that students were actually bullying this girl. Even the school wow. counselor knew of it and they couldn't do anything to prevent it. So this actually turned from a Netflix series to a real life series wow. where a nine year old, you know, was bullied and harassed. So what's your thoughts on that? As far as like African Americans well, just being bullied and as a, at a young, starting at a young age. Uh, what is this at, in Alabama? In Alabama. What part, you know? I'm not sure, to be honest with you. I just know it's not. Well, I, I, you know, I, I have Lily, family. Lily. Lin Lily. Lily. Oh, man. Well, I have family in Mobile, Alabama, Montgomery, Alabama, um, my last name, Chastang, Alabama. And I know down there it's a lot of uh, racial everything. Mm -hmm. You know, it's in the heart of the South, right? Mm -hmm. For a nine-year-old to actually have enough courage to, to not try to die slow, but to just say, I'm going to get it over with mm -hmm. and, hang, and, and hang herself, that's, that's beyond, I don't know, realistic to me, you know, because it's like, wow, man, like she had to be going through a lot. And it could have been, been bullying, but other things at home as well. Right. I don't know. What was the family like out there? Well, the family, the, well, the mom, she was basically saying that the daughter was a straight-A student. Oh, okay. You know, she was a straight-A student. She was always doing good, but she was just always being teased, always being picked, picked on. And I'm sitting here thinking to myself, she's in elementary school. When I was a TSS worker, you know, I could see how these kids are. Like, mm -hmm. me being 27, I'm looking at, I'm like, man, these kids, they can be, they can be handled. They can be controlled. Mm -hmm. Man, these kids is cursing better than adults. Yeah, and they're, using, it, and they're using it the way it's supposed to be it's used. supposed to be used and they saying it with no problem like they're saying a regular abc word i mean you know like the alphabets and i'm sitting here just thinking to myself like is it coming from the parents is it coming from social media mm -hmm. is it coming from the television programs that we watch mm -hmm. you feel me but I, I just feel as though it really stems from you being in elementary school to where you're at in the adulthood absolutely and it affects you mentally you know? Yeah, I teach. I teach. I substitute teach, man. And I see these kids. It's it's plenty of forms of bullying, right. and I see it all the time. So I mean, for her to deal with, you know, racial bullying, I mm -hmm. believe. Yes. Yeah, man. That's that's just crazy, man. It is. Um, you know, we have a situation occurring. I know a lot of y'all have been watching it on social media. I posted this on my page today, and it crossed a lot of uproar. Mm -hmm. You know, um, controversy. Ebro and Kodak Black. You know. 
Uh, Ebro was basically <clears throat> having Kodak Black on his show on Hot 97 um, this past um, last two days, and you know he has an sh- uh, album that's about to drop, Dying to Live, drops mm-hmm. tomorrow. Um, Kodak Black, and you know recently he just dropped his uh, music video, mm-hmm. Testimony. Mm-hmm. After he dropped the music video, maybe a day later, a post that came up saying Kodak is possibly facing 30 years in jail for sexual assault. So people swept it under the rug because it wasn't a reliable source. Mm -hmm. It was social media, you know? Until the reliable source Ebro came up and and took the cat out the head. Mm -hmm. He said, man, I know we we have a touchy subject, uh, a um, touchy touchy topic, Mm -hmm. and I noticed that we can't really speak too much on it. Mm -hmm. But when you come back, Mm -hmm. or if you come back, I would love for us to discuss that. Mm He took the cat out the head and it made him feel uncomfortable. Mm. You know, a lot of people feel as though Kodak was right by walking off. A lot of people feel as though he was guilty by saying, yo, like, why do I want to talk about this? Like, we need to be talking about something else or I'm about to dip. So what's your thoughts on that? I think he didn't handle it like a young man or a man, period. Number one, if you know these allegations are brought up on you, why didn't you explain to Ebro and everybody else, listen, it's a bunch of allegations are brought up on me. I don't want to talk about that. I have an album that's about to drop. Let's talk about that. Ebro did not say anything personally about his case. He only stated, yo, listen, I know this is a touchy subject. We hear about this all the time. Maybe, you know, when you come back, we can speak on it a little bit further. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, People are under these comments saying all these bad things, man. And I'm looking at it like, well, these guys are doing what they're supposed to do as an interviewer, right? But the thing is this, though. I've never heard of Ebro getting anybody locked up after an interview. Mm-hmm. I've heard of Vlad getting, well, not not saying he <laughs> did, I'm not gonna say he got people locked up, but I've heard of people right. getting locked up after a Vlad interview. Yeah, pretty, we don't gotta say names, I'm pretty sure. If y'all from Philly, y'all know who you're talking about. Right, so, uh, you, you know, nobody goes under his comments and say, yo, they speak on the, the drugs that they sold, mm-hmm. yo, the court case, right. the criminal activities, and every, everybody's cool. Mm-hmm. But Ebro just didn't, he just mentioned that. But you know what, now I'm gonna speak for those that's probably on both of our lives saying. Okay. Now, people feel as though Ebro was antagonizing it. Like, yo, you feel like, you, you seem like you have an attitude that I mentioned it. Like, all right, now why did you say that? Because I mean, if you're stuck, Right. Maybe he could have said a, some more uh, like con words, mm-hmm. like "Are you okay?" Right. But we dealing with alpha men. Mm-hmm. We dealing with men, right. and you know, men. I mean, sometimes we don't talk like that, right? Right, right? Yo, what's the problem, bro? Like, yo, you seem like you tight mm-hmm. right now. Yeah, I get it. He made it first time meeting this guy. Bro. Yeah, and, and you know, like I, I, I get it. You I get it. Like, like, I get it. Like, I get it. But he, I mean, but the one thing that Kodak have to understand is this though: when whether you're right or wrong. Mm-hmm. You are a superstar. Right. And when these things come out and you're going on these interviews, you have to be prepared for this. That's true. And that's what your staff should be talking about. That's Yo, true. listen, we about to go ahead. We know what type of time Ebro be on. Mm-hmm. Let's make sure we get everything out the hat. Right. That's true. I and agree. that's and, and that will eliminate. That's true. Now let me ask y'all this. Now, a lot of people don't even know this. Like we were just speaking on this um or prior to the interview. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> a lot of interviewers mm-hmm. like to have a rundown or survey of questions that they would like to ask the person that they're interviewing. Uh-huh. Now, we don't know if that was asked or brought up or mm-hmm. anything. For example, like I was explaining to you earlier before, um, behind the cameras, mm-hmm. you know, Chris Brown and Robin Roberts from Good Morning America mm-hmm. years ago, Fame album, you know, for all my fans and for all my enemies. That was mm-hmm. for um, Chris Brown. He basically we had an interview um, set up with Good Morning, Good Morning America mm-hmm. basically promoting his album. Mm-hmm. The first thing Robin Roberts decided to discuss was the domestic violence case against Rihanna that was over three years ago. Mm-hmm. Why are we still speaking on something that I'm trying to get past? I'm promoting my album and you're trying to put me on a spotlight in front of all these cameras to get me to say something, knowing damn well I'm only here to speak about my album. And I feel like that's the same situation for Kodak. Kodak you got to think about it. He, Kodak may be 20, 21. He got a lot of shit going on with him. You know, he got sexual assault um, charges. He got uh, all these weapon charges. Mm-hmm. He got a lot of charges, you know? And I'm looking at it like, for my first time seeing this person, why would you want to mention a sexual assault case 
that I can't even speak on. Yeah. I, it put I, me in a tough situation. It was like I'm handicapped. It's like, and him being from Florida, wherever he's from, he got that attitude. Like you said, the alpha male, like, come on, man. It seemed like y'all interested in the bullshit. Right. Well, that's what sells, right? That's what sells. Mm -hmm. That's what's going on. He's being the interviewer. And he's doing what he does with everybody else, I feel like. I feel like Ebro, you know, he may be light on certain people. He may go hard on certain people. But at the end of the day, you as the superstar have to be prepared right. for everything. That's, that's everything. You have to have tough skin because you're on the spotlight now. Right. And you make one false move, it's over with. Right. So, Kodak, man, you should have a staff that's preparing you for these type of moments. And that's how I feel. Right. Because there's gonna be, it's people out here tougher than Ebro. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. So, yeah. I agree, and it, look, Trick Daddy felt some type of way about it as well. I'm not sure if y'all seen that on uh, that video as well, but Trick Daddy was losing his mind. You know, I don't know if to take Trick Daddy serious Honey, or not. Trick Daddy is Trick Daddy came at Meek, and then Meek had to, you know, he had this. Listen, you know, man, Trick Daddy. And now he want to come at. Trick Daddy is just trying, man. Trick Daddy. Trying to be relevant. He's, <laughs> man, like Trick Daddy. He's trying to be relevant. Trick Daddy is doing this, man. You don't know that. Yeah, yeah. They <laughs> like me. <laughs> you wear more polo me. than me, girl. <laughs> and knock it off, Tricky. Yeah, I feel that. I feel you know, that, come on, Tricky. But for all my viewers, though, I'm, uh, mm -hmm. I really apologize. I didn't even introduce this guy, you know. Um, this is my man, uh, Brandon Chastain, you know. Uh, B. McFly, you know, introduce yeah, yourself man. to everyone, man. Yeah, man, my name is uh, Brandon Chastain, a.k.a. B. McFly, and, you know, I'm just here to bring this 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 different type of light to social media. Right. You know, like the realism and the harsh reality. Um, I'm an actor, director, uh, uh, man, motivator, public speaker, mm. and I'm a sober messenger. Mm. So, you know, that's what I'm here for, man. So I came across this, you know, his guy um, on social media, you know, I follow Walla. Um, now Walla's a, a motivational speaker from Philadelphia and on social media, you know, he basically just got on a rampage and just started dropping all these videos of wisdom, you know, and it was basically some informal stuff to wake up the community, mm -hmm. you know, and the reason I mentioned him because you know, he's a motivational speaker and his message may touch people different than how Wallow messages touch me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's called different audience. Mm -hmm. Now what made you decide or what made you decide to be a motivational speaker? Well, it's 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 funny because I've always had that in me okay. to speak at the you know, with the crowd. I just didn't know I didn't have the direction. Okay. And the direction came from my experience of being of being addicted to Percocets okay. for ten years. I got shot in two thousand and four. I graduated from Lincoln. Shout out to Lincoln. Oh, you, you feel me? <laughs> I graduated from Lincoln in two thousand and four, May, and I got shot two thousand and four, July. Mm. So, and I, and, and two thousand and eight is when my addiction started heavy. So I was on Percocets for ten years straight, mm. on and off, and I finally went to rehab. Mm -hmm. I went to rehab January the 21st of this year, 2018. Okay. And I said, when I come home, I'm about to just do things that's totally different. Right. I'm going to speak on everything that's real. Like, I'm going to make sure you see the visual behind it. All right. And I did 30 days in rehab. I did five days in detox and the rest in rehab. Right. And when I came home in, in February... You know, it was told to me that my son will be one will be living with me, my older son. Mm -hmm. And I said, boom, it must be me. Right. Let me get back. Let me get back in order. I got my son with me. Let's go. And I did my first skit inside of a I, I made my bathroom as a prison, right. as a as a jail cell. Mm -hmm. And it was on from there. OK, now by you having that motivation to speak and mm -hmm. background and like you say, you just <clears throat> had, uh, I want to say, something motivated you as far as you having your drug abuse. Yeah. As far as the Percocets and things yeah. of that sort. Now, a lot of people go through this. I know it's a lot of people that have drug abuse and, you know, I know it's hard for y'all to get past this shit. But, like, if you don't mind me asking, what was the step, you know, for you to get past it? I had to feel like I was damn near about to die, man. I had to feel like everything that I was trying was, wasn't working. Right. And my next step would have been dope. Like, right. my next step would have been dope. 
And that's another, and that's something else within itself. And I, you know, I, I was I was mixing Percocets with, with Zannies, and I'm like, yo, I'm waking up like, yo, man, I'm full of slobber, and I'm just like, man. And shout out to my kid's mother, man. You know, Ayoshin, like, she played a major part in my recovery. Mm-hmm. And um, I just told her, man, yo, listen, I'm ready. I'm ready because I'm not going to make it, man. I'm about to do something that's going to either put me in jail for the rest of my life, I'm about to die out here, or I'm going to do something that's against my morals. And that's the thing that people don't talk about. Mm -hmm. And I said, man, listen, let me just go, man. And that's what happened, man. And that's what changed when I came out of there. I felt free again. Now, by you doing that, do you feel as though you had a purpose behind cleaning yourself up? No, oh, it's, it's not, you know, a lot of people, for example, you know, a lot of people that smoke weed, a lot of people that do a lot of different things, they have this reason on why they want to stop. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, I want to stop smoking weed to get a job, you know, things like right. that. So what was your reason, like, like besides you saying you feel as though you were going to die, like you have children and things in that sort, do you feel like that was affecting you? Well, my children, I was neglecting my children. Um, that, that, that was the most important part. Okay. I, you know, when I'm clean, I'm around my children. When I'm getting high and it's to the point of no return, I'm not around them. Right. So it was like, and the kids, and, and then my oldest son was getting older. Um, I'm around people. My, my mother was a drug addict. My father was a drug addict. Um, I'm around people. I'm surrounded with drug addicts. And it's like, it's a norm. The environment. The environment is a norm. Is, and, and, and you know, and we still was talking down on each other. Mm-hmm. Oh, you get high. Well, I guess I get high a little bit more than you. Right. So I'm just like, hey, it's crazy. Like we having a competition to destroy ourselves. We having a competition <laughs> to destroy ourselves, and we want to see who's the coolest addict yeah. in yeah. the community. Yeah. And then on top of that, nowadays it's called the big. You're the getting, big. You're getting clowned for yeah. looking like a fool. Mm. You know. Um, you know, my, I'm 27, you know, we look at Percocets like the new crack. Oh, it is. You know? It is. I mean, like, come on, man. Every, every, every dog will have his day. Mm-hmm. The 80s, it was, the 80s, it was crack. Mm-hmm. The, in, the, in the 90s, it was the coke or whatever the case you want to be. Like, everybody starts snorting. Mm-hmm. And now in the 2000s, man, it's the pills. Right. And, 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 you know. Now, let's get on this social media um, plane. You know, a lot of people ride this social media wave, you know. Now, I know it's not easy for you to just come on a camera and speak. Now, you had the message behind everything. What pushed you to get that recognition as far as, all right, I have an audience. I have people watching me now. You know, like what? I think facing humiliation. I had to, one thing about life, right? People want to see, they want to hear the story of the underdog, right? Mm-hmm. You and then for those who know you and they they don't know your deepest secrets, they want to hear your deepest secrets because some people may look at you like you know you're the man on campus. Mm-hmm. Yo, you're yo yo. Listen, you're big guy on campus. Like nothing's happening to you. Mm-hmm. But then when they hear yo McFlowers on pills, oh snaps! I ain't even know that yo McFly. So when he was asking for money, I thought he was this. But he was really asking for money for that, or or he was in the gym. So people want to hear the story. People want to hear controversy. They want to see you humiliate yourself. Mm. That's something that people want to watch. They want to see you slip and fall, mm-hmm. right? And I said the audience is coming now mm-hmm. because I'm talking. When I do my skits, I'm talking about me, and then I may talk about my community. Mm-hmm. And I always tell people that, man, when I did the skit with me being a deadbeat pop, sleeping from couch to couch, that was about me. Mm. And everybody was, you know, the girls, oh, yeah, he, you know what I mean? And then the guys are sitting back, like, in, in their own cubby, like, yo, he talking about me. Hey, but hey, I'm hey, talking hey, about me, you too. You, personally, right, right. Yeah. And then you're making it relatable, though. And I'm making saying? it relatable. Right. And when you look at social media, it's nobody doing that. It's nobody reenacting mm-hmm. our issues, mm-hmm. our mental issues, mm-hmm. our physical issues, our issues that we just can't get by, period, because we're afraid of help. We're afraid of help. So I'm going to say, I'm going to help us. 
I'm going to humiliate myself, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to share my story, and hopefully it's, you can jump on board. Yeah, and on top of that, you never know who, who you're actually touching with your yeah. story, you mm -hmm. know? Because at the end of the day, I was on your live yesterday. You know, um, I was on his live yesterday, and wow. you know, like I said, you know, before I interview people, I like to get to know someone. I'm not just going to randomly interview you, and I don't know a damn thing mm -hmm. about you. So I had him. I hopped on his live yesterday, and he so happened to be on live with an 18 year old, I believe. Yeah. And soon as I got on his live, you know, I just noticed Brandon saying some real stuff to him, and then I just noticed he had a tear falling like coming down his eye, man. And hearing his story. It, it really affected me because I understand it's a lot of people that's similar to, or that's like him going through that struggle. And that struggle was like, I think he was explaining that his mother was passing away or- His mother was cast cancer. Cast cancer. She's fighting with cancer. And then he was stuck in the midst of helping her or stealing with his homies. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like, he said he was stuck because he, he don't want to leave them because that's all he knows, sandbox. And then you got your mom you know, going through cancer, you you made a good point. Yo, who you living for? Right. Who you living Your future for? Future family or, you know, or, or, or who you trying to be a real one for? Are you trying to be a real one for your friends? Right, right. Or are you trying to be a real one for your family? Right. You're an 18 year old kid with no children. Yo, you're 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 right there at death, mm -hmm. statistically. Mm -hmm. Yo, you have the opportunity to go, right. go, man. And if you don't go, you know what's going to happen. You're going to either be dead in jail, and it's another thing that we forget, homeless. Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I told him to go, man. It almost made me cry, man. Because he, then he started letting it out even more, yeah. man. And I'm like, wow. Because you got to think, right, if we are chilling on the corner, it's a good chance that we are suffering from the same problem. So what we do is we congregate around each other to see if we can heal each other, but we don't know how to heal. Because hmm. it, it may come off as too vulnerable or too sensitive. Oh, yeah, because we raised off of survival. We wasn't raised going off that, of love. Going off of that conversation. We were, we're raised off of survival, and you better endure pain. You better take pain. You better not cry when you slip. You better not do nothing, and you better hit them if they hit you back. That's all we know. Right. That's all we know. Absolutely. Now, what will be your most defining video? Because I feel as though the one where you had the evolution of the the the, the males, oh, yeah, and also good. the females, and then also I believe I'm not sure if that was your son, but it was a guy playing your son. I did. That was he was an actor. Yeah, I think yeah. That, and, and going towards the graveyard. So those three right there was like, boom, like damn, yo, I felt that. Like which one would be if you had to pick one? Which would be the most defining video? Like damn, I think I nailed this one. Oh my goodness, man. I know, I know it's a tough question. I know it is. Well, numbers wise, yeah. I nailed the one when the girls were about to fight. Okay. And, and um, over social media. Okay. And the mothers are encouraging it. Mm. I, I, you know, that was like a million views on Instagram. Okay. On Facebook. 1M too, just let y'all know that. Huh? 1M. I just want yeah, to, yeah, one one, mil, you feel me? Yeah, one mil on Instagram. Yeah. I mean, it's different. That's Talk different, man. The million views. That's, yeah, ain't no doubt, doubt man. Time. I got I'm on platinum on Instagram. <laughs> you know what I mean? You miss plaque. Yeah, gotta give me my <laughs> plaque. But um I, I think on 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 Facebook, wow, man, because I got a couple of million views on Facebook, mm -hmm. man. I'm t so but I think I think the most powerful one. Damn, they all powerful, man. I think the taking the kid to the grave, man. I, you know, I, 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 oh, I got another one where I robbed. All right, so I'm running with this guy. He got a gun in his hand, mm -hmm. and I got a book in my hand. Mm -hmm. So I'm chasing him. I'm running him down with the book. He gets to the wall. He turn around. He put the gun to my head. Mm -hmm. I put the book to his chest, mm -hmm. and I'm like, man. What if I rob you from mental slavery? Like, basically, with a gun, what if I rob you for your hat, right? But I'm saying with the book, what if I rob you from mental slavery? What if I strip you from ignorance? And that took off, too, man. It's like... That's real, though. Like, that's, that's a message behind it. Yeah, so, ah, man, I don't know, man. I don't know. With some light ones I did on rape and I did on uh, statutory rape. I mean, I don't know, man. Maybe the grave in the book, man. No, I understand that. I, I feel like the grave one was, um, I want to say, impactful towards the community. Yeah, yeah. The reason I say that because a lot of black men 
unfortunately aren't in their children's lives or in their son's lives you know and it's a lot of black males getting killed out here you yeah. know and like you said that one video like for example he had a gun you say well son put this gun down put this we I, I don't think you said we but put such and such oh, down. Yeah, yeah, i don't yeah. want to lose you you know things yeah. in that sort of like you never know, man. Some people need to hear that type of shit, yo. Like you say, we all congregate on a corner and things and that sort, but you never know what you're going through, yo. At the end of the day, yeah, you, people might smoke, drink, and things and that sort, you easing away your pain. You yeah. Know I mean? You never know because people don't like to open their mouth and shit because they feel weak. Right. You know, things and that sort, but a lot of people don't know you're really hurting yourself. You're basically hiding something by easing the drugs. I mean, easing the putting the drugs inside of your body to ease the pain mm. as if it's going to go away. But the next day, you're going to probably go through it even more tougher than you did the original mm. day. You know, um, I want to get to you with this acting thing. I noticed that you was working with uh, KP, free, um, fake KP. Mm -hmm. um, fake free KP um, mm -hmm. with the music videos mm -hmm. and things. And that's true. That joint was lit, man. So what's, what's up with that? As I, far as the acting. I, you know, when I... <sighs> By me being sober, I feel like I'm free now. So any emotion, any body language, I'm not tense no more. Right. I'm like, it's like whatever, man. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, I feel like I have the acting skills. I, I always had it. Right. Me, me trying to be cool kid on campus, man. Trying to be stuck up and so, no, man, I am me mm -hmm. and now I can act now. Now I can show you more skills. And, you know, that's what I do, man. Like, I, I always had it. That's how I feel. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. What's your purpose? I mean, if you have an idea, do you feel as though you had, what's your purpose in the community? My purpose is in the community. Like, towards the African-American community or the we, youth? Well, I, we, have to, we have to do something untraditional. And my purpose is to reform the school system. Mm. Um, you have to realize one thing. Philadelphia is the fifth. Sometimes we go back and forth as the sixth largest city, but I believe we the fifth. I could be wrong. Um, largest city in America. We have the worst school system yep. Yep. out of the top 10 schools, top 10 largest schools, I mean, largest cities in, in the United States. Mm -hmm. We are the poorest city out of the top 10 largest cities in America. So when you look at things like that, the education, why not? You want us, it's a pipeline, right? right? Either to jail, homelessness, or just being a worker. Mm -hmm. Nothing else. So you mean to tell me, oh, we can only learn Spanish? No. Why don't you teach us how to speak Russian? Why don't you teach us how to speak Asian? Some type of Asian language, because these are the people that are coming into our communities and language. building <laughs> and selling. They either building or they selling, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Uh, we can only play basketball and football. That's like our target sport, right? Mm -hmm. What about gymnastics? Because mm -hmm. I remember flipping off of mattresses and doing all types of running skips and all that. Yeah, no, Douglas. Yeah, and these guys, these kids are in there flipping too, but mm -hmm. it ain't nothing going on. Right. Uh, bringing more black men into these schools mm -hmm. and not saying, Thanks. yo. That's a fact. And not saying, well, you know what? We got to have a paper. We got to take this test because it's only 2% of us in America that works in the school system. Mm -hmm. So these things needs to be reformed, man, and I think we need to go on strike. The kids need to go on strike, and I'm talking about for months at a time until they change everything around. Oh, that's, some, that's the first time I ever heard that, and I actually think that might be a smart idea, to be honest with you. What they gonna do, kill everybody? What they gonna do, tell everybody either kill? They are already closing the schools down. They are already closing the schools and down. they're opening more prisons. So it, you just said that pipeline. If y'all, hopefully y'all paying attention to that. I really hope y'all paid attention to that, because basically, it seemed like, I don't know if you ever seen Fells. You seen Fells and New Fells? No, no, I didn't. Oh, man, you got to see Fells, man. It looks like a prison from the outside. I'm and not even trying to be funny, because when I was younger, a lot of people used to say, yo, some of these scores are built like prisons. Well, think about and it. And I never understood it until I actually seen it. And I'm like, yo, this looks like a prison from outside. Well, think about it. I, I tell these kids, man, when I'm teaching, they're building prisons based on your third and fourth yeah. grade score yep. level, mm -hmm. your test levels, right? Yep. So, I mean, yes, it's more than just the children. We need the parents as well. But this is the thing. We are in an era where parents are following the children. Mm -hmm. Parents are going through so many mental health issues. They're going through relationship issues, financial issues. And it's like, listen, you're old enough, deal with it. Talk to your teacher, let them deal with it. 
And yes, that's a personal thing. Right. But if we could get the, the kids are doing everything in school but learning. They come in to sleep, they come in to eat, they come in to socialize, they come in to cry, they come in to figure it out. But they're not learning nothing. Mm -hmm. There's so many substitute teachers that are needed mm -hmm. because they're pulling teachers on purpose from these suburb areas that don't know nothing about urban community, urban community, <laughs> the culture. So when I go to school and teach, I dress like this right. because they looking at me. Oh, they not. He's like me. He's like me. Yeah. Oh, he's not the fly guy yeah, 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 on the corner yeah, selling yeah, drugs. Yeah. He's the fly guy in coming in school right. teaching. Right, right. Duh. Right, right, right. I agree, man. Because like I said, when I was a TSS, the lady said to me, one of the deans, she said, "We need a lot of black men in here." Yeah. You know why? Because they don't see anyone that looks like them. They don't. And I never understood it, man. But you just saying that, man, coming in with a hoodie, you be like, damn, yo, Mr. Uh, Mr. They probably call you Mr. C or Yeah, Mr. Chastain or Mr. C, yeah. Yeah, Mr. C, yo, you look cool today, though. And that makes them feel good. Oh, yeah, they do it all the time. Yo, where you get them phone posits from? And I'm not doing this to tease them. Yeah, yeah, yo. Clearly, I'm doing this to say, yo, listen, one, one girl said, yo, you don't look like a teacher. I said, so what do a teacher look like? It was a tie and a dress. Yeah, and you were supposed to, yeah, you better, you guys better um, listen up and sit straight. No, I let the I let a kid, listen, you want to you wanna be relaxed on the floor and take down notes? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm not doing, just don't doing, disrupt the class. Don't disrupt the class. Mm -hmm. right. You want to take off your sneakers and be comfortable? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Just don't disrupt the class. Right. Because we're dealing with mental health issues, mm -hmm. severe and moderate. Or in or, or, or and, and, and just very, very low. But the bottom line is, man, we got to do what we got to do, man. And I'm a black man that look like a guy from the corner. I look like I am got locked up. I'm tall. I'm husky. And I fit the description the of, yeah, of the, yo, listen, he's selling drugs, on drugs, been in jail years at a time. Right. No. Right. no. Wrong guy. You got wrong the wrong guy. guy. Wrong guy. Most definitely, but uh, I wanted you to ask, ask you this question as far as the R&B thing. I know this is probably left field, but you know, as far as the R&B situation, now Jack Quiz, it's his young guy, you know, um, he came out and said he's like the king of R&B right now, <laughs> oh of God. this new generation. And you know, I just want to get an older person perspective on this, or um, you know, answer on this. Now, I feel as though R. Kelly might be that guy. That's just me. Come on. I'm disrespectful. He no. said, come on. Dude. No, no, you're not being disrespectful. Okay, okay. No, I'm just saying, like, this is just real, like, we we talking about, this is real simple arithmetic. Now, you got R. Kelly, you got Chris Brown now. I mean, if you want to talk about this generation, you say Chris Brown, but as far as R&B, I just think of R. Kelly still. I don't think no one top R. Kelly. I mean, when you think about Sing it, man. Singing-wise, I forget about the other well, when you think about it, right, if you want to talk about numbers, right, because when you, today's world is numbers. Yeah, if you want to talk about numbers, I mean, none of them. Mike. No, no, no. I'm no, not going to say Mike. Be no, because he's more, he can be R&B. You re remember, R&B is rhythm and blues. Right, right. So, you know, he can be R&B. He can turn into R&B, but he's more of pop. Right. When you talk about numbers, none of them guys sell like that. None of them do. None of them do. So, get the, they already lose in numbers. Mm -hmm. If you're talking about love ballads, mm. a love ballad is something that you know for a fact sticks with everybody. Not no, mm. oh, you know, this was a sexy, freaky, watch a girl dance on a pole song. Mm. We talking about, damn, I know when she comes over, I'm playing him. Or for the ambiance to be relaxed, I'm playing him. Mm -hmm. Half of them lose too. Now you may got a little bit of Jack Jacquees today, Tyson. What's his name? Um, uh, Tyson. What's his name? Oh, you, are you probably talking about uh, Tank or no? He said not Tank. Uh, I forgot his name, man. Yeah. But anyway, but these guys don't last long, man. Yeah. We talking about like, are you gonna be really? Do you pick out? You're a little younger than me. Do you pick out a a a, um, a Chris Brown song and just be like, yo, I want to hear some Chris Brown right now. No, I don't. Actually. Exactly. And that, and that may not be for no, everybody, but like Usher can be. No, I agree. Usher could be up there. Yeah. Trey songs in the beginning could be up yeah, there. Yeah, not this Trey. Yeah, not this yeah, Trey songs. Yeah. R. Kelly definitely still got yeah, it. Yeah. And those guys right there that we're naming are like 
R&B legends. legends, love ballads, making love songs, all of that. It's just funny because Jay Holiday randomly came out of nowhere 11 years later to myself. I'm tired of people saying they the king of R&B when this man haven't even dropped a song since Bed and Suffocate. Yo, listen, you Jay know? Holiday, if you don't go somewhere and like figure it out, yeah, some lady had confused this man as a valet driver and everything while he was making a video. He was pissed off. He was like, come on, man. I ain't no valet driver. Valet drivers don't wear no Gucci, baby. I was like, girl, you ain't got to say Oh, yeah, you're that. done, buddy. You're like, done. You ain't got to say all that. Though. You're done. But like I said, I um, wanted to get this guy, you know, Brandon McFly, chest tank in the building, you know, for the Dev Hall Show, episode seven. You know, it's a pleasure for that even to have you here, man. Yes, to be it's honest, a pleasure. Yo, listen, this man. This man's going to blow up. I already know that. Man, listen, it's a pleasure even being here. I tell you, man, when I first walked in here, I'm like, hold up. Hold up. What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> and this is nice. Yeah. This is very, very nice. Appreciate very, that, very man. nice, man. It means a lot, though. Yeah, no But yeah, uh, like I said, episode seven. I just hope y'all like this episode and be yeah. tuned for episode eight next week. Episode eight. My man. Yeah.